Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, your source for everything money. I'm your host, Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Gary Pinkerton on the line, and he's president over at Align Strategic Wealth, which is an insurance-based financial services firm. Uh, Gary, welcome back to the show. Hey, thank you very much, Adam. As always, I am uh, honored and pleased to be with you. So I'm excited about today's topic. I mean, generational wealth, wealth transfer, I mean, taxes. I mean, uh, this is a money show. This is like, we're, we're, this is our realm. So I love it. I'm excited <laughs> to get into the topics with you. But before we do that, um, I do want to get a little bit more into uh, what you're doing over at Align Strategic Wealth. So first, start off by telling us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure, sure. So it's a, it's a company that I started. I work in partnership with a, a friend, mentor, uh, just great guy, uh, his company out of Salt Lake City, Utah, and his company is named Paradigm Life. Uh, my portion of it, I work uh, individually with business owners, families, um, high earners, uh, real estate investors, individuals who are looking to have a better uh, cash management system, a better way to store and grow their wealth in a, in a tax-advantaged uh, environment, um, pulling a lot of other advantages along with it, but essentially it is storing your upcoming investments, your major purchase dollars, uh, perhaps college education and retirement dollars in a place where it's going to grow and compound um, without, you know, the impact of opportunity cost or taxes. I love it. And that, I mean, that just gets us right into this. So, I mean, the two great wealth destroyers, uh, taxes and family members, as you put it. Come on, let's get into it, Gary. So uh, let's talk about the generational wealth transfer. What do we do? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, if you go back and study uh, the great um, entrepreneurs of American history, right, I, I've, I've read as many of the, of the great biographies as I can. And one that stands out is a guy named John D. Rockefeller, right? And he was one of the robber barons of the late 1800s, early 1900s. I think that term is really, really disrespectful, but that's what we know them as. Uh, they were people who just absolutely changed the world. And, uh, you know, before him, probably the first Cornelius Vanderbilt and then um, Andrew Carnegie and Rockefeller, and they were amazing guys that knew each other, and uh, each of them in their time was the wealthiest guy in America and had set new records. Yet um, the only one of them that we know descendants of today and that we continue to hear about is John, uh, John D. Rockefeller's family. He's now six generations into it, have a huge foundation, a huge charity, and a very prominent building in New York City. And what's the difference in the families? And the difference is that Rockefeller – saw the coming tax code in the early 1900s and set his family up with trusts and life insurance to protect from that. And that's, that's the huge thing. Tax is by far the biggest destroyer of dynasties, of family wealth, of our ability to kind of control our own future. And then there's family. And I kind of, you know, it, it, it's not joking, uh, but uh, I do get a lot of funny looks when I, when I mention that family is the other destroyer of wealth. Um, and you can cite any number of examples. They probably have a reality TV show, and they're a descendant of a very uh, wealthy individual who helped shape America. And uh, you know, it, and it's not that they're bad people. It's that they did not have the family did not have an education system, a financial education mm -hmm. system, to help them understand what they have, and that they're stewards of this great tool uh, to be used for good. So that's where no, the taxes and family come in. Completely. And when I laughed at the family part, I, I think that might be one of the number one. So I was laughing, but uh, I mean, if we think about one of yeah. the other, if we think about one of the more successful, okay, so you gave Rockefeller, who was a successful one with planning there. To take the other end of the spectrum on who was uh, successful on the family side, we'd have to look at the Rothschilds. Um, so we don't yeah. have time to go into that because that's a really old family and they had some very <laughs> specific practices. But that Neil Ferguson book, I still remember when I read it. I'm like, what? Like that's how yeah. you keep. I mean, it's, it's something else. But um, so that being said, let's yeah. go. Let's take it a step further. So. Uh -huh. um, who should be thinking about generational wealth transfer? Because I think a lot of times people use examples like we just did, so Rothschilds, Carnegie, sure. Rockefellers. But um, some, how does the saying go? I'm no Rockefeller. Well, if you're not a Rockefeller, <laughs> should you be thinking about this generational wealth transfer? 
You know, absolutely. So in the end, I, I, well, certainly I am not a philosopher, but when asked the question, you know, what does it all mean in the end? Well, most people will say it's about the time I spent with my family, but what do you do in that time, right? So you're creating memories, but I think also any of us who feel like we added value to this world want to pass it on to people who will listen, and generally that's our families, right? Unless, you know, we have some mentees that, that have looked up to us as a parent or as a, you know, a senior mentor. But bottom line is, if we've made a difference in the world, one of the most important things for each individual is to be able to pay it forward, right, to pass it forward. Um, that's how you leave the impact. It's not with just open dollars, right? Those dollars can destroy as easily as they can create. So um, I believe that anyone who has something that they want to pass forward to their to their, the rest of the world does so through their caring and loving children that are they're receptive to it. And if you can do that in addition to passing some money to them so that they have the means with which to propagate things, I think personally that's where it happens. And so anyone who intends to not die in poverty, you know, there, there's so many people I talk to and they say, hey, I want my last check to bounce. That's not me. And so I would say to answer your question, anyone who does want to leave money for the good of others, whether it be through a charity or through their own family, this applies. No, I love it. And I have to agree. It just comes down to this. Like nobody, it, for most of us, um, that money wouldn't have been given to us. So I don't care how much it is. If you like the idea that it, um, I mean, the idea to me, it's ridiculous. The idea that the state has a fund or that states have funds of uh, lost assets that get there. There's entire businesses and a cottage industry around it on all these assets that are just, you know, they just go to the state, not even, not even the tax side of things, but I just mean just literally people People disappear. They don't. They don't leave it to anything. And even if you don't have family, like a cause to other things. I mean, this just it just shows the need for what you do on a, on another level. But and that's the extreme example again. Um, but that being yeah. said, what are some um, what are like? Let's just say there's some people listening right now, and that we find they know they mm -hmm. need to do some things for a very long time, and they're fine. And maybe maybe our voices struck a chord with them, and they're like, oh, okay, I'll do it. Um, yeah. What is what? Where where do they start? Where do they start on their research? I should say, because we're not we don't have the time to go through. And obviously, everybody should sure. con should consult their individual tax advisor and financial advisor and every other thing we have to say for compliance on this insert there. But where do they start? Well, you know, it's the key things are how can you set up a situation where it's fun for your children and grandchildren to participate in things like, you know, money, like learning educational things, like, you know, being having an environment where you can talk to your children about what the family assets are. I mean, you, you were talking about how there's so many uh, unclaimed assets out there. That's because the, the patriarchs uh, of the family – and I'm not talking about wealthy again. I'm just saying that, that people don't talk to their children and their grandchildren about what they have and what they're doing and why they have it, why they chose that asset class. Um, and often they don't even know it exists, right? So it's typically a train wreck when people are trying to um, deal with the assets of their recently deceased parents or grandparents or aunts and uncles or whatever. And it's because people don't have the conversation. So I think finding a way, you know, you know your kids the best and your grandkids the best. What would they enjoy? Is it is it having a family meeting uh, while you're at uh, Disneyland? Is it um, around the Thanksgiving table? Is it uh, during Christmas time? It's, it's whatever uh, environment you can create that would be receptive for your family members, your descendants, to start to hear about what's important to you, what assets the family has, and why you put those in place. I mean, that's part of those experiences and lessons that can really be passed on. And and then about passing the actual money, right, It's you want to do it in a tax-protected way. And there's multiple ways, but the one that has worked for 150 years is life insurance so that you can protect it and pass it on. And once you've passed education, knowledge, uh, and, and how to respect money with alongside money that shows up tax-free at your death, you've set in motion a way in which you can maintain uh, financial knowledge uh, and assets from generation to generation without giving them up in taxes. That's awesome. So, Gary, if somebody is uh, is listening to this and they want uh -huh. more information on Align Strategic Wealth um, or to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, the easiest way is my uh, website, which is my name, so GaryPinkerton.com. My email is not much harder. It's Gary at GaryPinkerton.com. And on there, you'll find out about the books that I've written, um, the, you know, the, the teams that I'm connected with, and an ability to just kind of connect that one-on-one -on -one with me. I, I meet uh, all 50 states actually globally with, with uh, Americans who are, are interested in talking these topics. 
I do it one on one, you know, over Zoom and and other uh, online meetings, right? So it's pretty common nowadays. Awesome. Well, hey Gary, um, always great talking to you. Great, great conversation today, and I uh, lo- love the love the topic. It's not going away. So generational wealth transfer, um, how to do it right, how to do it smart, how how to make sure that your money gets to who you want it to get, whether that's family, an organization, a charity, wherever you want it to get. Um, all of those um, take tax planning and take investment planning. So glad to have you on the show, Gary. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Uh, without you, there is no show. So keep listening, subscribe, do all that great stuff. And And uh, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, um, Mission Matters Money, don't forget to hit the subscribe button there and uh, leave some comments in the comment section of this video. Love to hear your thought process on uh, on generational wealth transfer, and uh, let's keep the conversation going. And uh, Gary, thanks again for coming on the show. Yes, sir. It was a true pleasure. Thank you.